Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, dear colleagues, dear friends, good afternoon, bonjour. I am Mathieu Leporini, the Science and Higher Education Attaché at the Institut Français in Helsinki, and uh, I would like to welcome all of you this afternoon for this event. I will be the moderator for the opening session, and then the following session will be dedicated, as expected, to the panel discussion after the documentary screening. This event has been made possible thanks to a lot of persons and institutions, and I would like to briefly thank all of them. More specifically first, all our panelists and moderator from France and Finland, thank you so much, all of you being here today. And thank also to the city of Helsinki for their very kind support and help in hosting this event today. I would like to thank also the Institut Francais in Paris for their support, and here all the teams from the uh, Institut Francais in Helsinki and from the city uh, of Helsinki for their great help. I would like also to encourage the audience to comment and participate actively to the today's event via Twitter with the hashtag NDI uh, Helsinki uh, 2018. In order to begin the official opening remarks of our first event on how can local power imagine sustainable solutions to global issues, I'm very pleased to introduce you to Mrs. Jeannette Bougrab, Cooperation Councillor of the Embassy of France in Finland and Director of the Institut Francais de Finlande. Jeannette. Mister, Monsieur le Sénateur, Madame la Vice-Maire, uh, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the French Institute, I would like to thank you for your presence for the opening of the third edition of La Nuit des Idées, the Night of Ideas. Night of Ideas is an international cultural event organized by Institut Français. The event first saw light in Paris three years ago. In Finland, it's a second time. The goal of the Night of ID is to celebrate the stream of ID between country, cultures, topic, and generation. Every year, the Night of ID gives the opportunity to discover the latest discovery in knowledge on art, to listen to the one who contribute to bring more ideas to the field and to take part in the discussion about the many issues on our time. Last year, Kiasma, University of Helsinki, the Festival Dog Point, European School, uh, have welcomed people to meet guests as Laura Linset, the Finlandia Prize, Yann Artus Bertrand, the French director of movies, the famous photographer, and Yanni Lenonen, the Finnish artist, and he received uh, the Finlandia Prize to debate a world in common. This year, during one night, this night, tonight, the Nuit des Idées is dedicated to l'imagination au pouvoir. L'imagination pouvoir is a slogan from of young 68. Power of imagination was a phrase sprayed by 1968 demonstration on Parisian wall, you know, à la Sorbonne University. This term, this year, if is a reference clearly to the 50th anniversary of May 68, but is not a commemoration. This question is more half a century later, how is yearning for your utopia expressed? What is the meaning of this call to be creative in all fields, technology, economy, science, or urbanism, or urbanism? How do societies deal with the unsinkable rise cap melting in human gene sequence, artificial intelligence? Can the work of literature, science fiction, help us understand better our world today. Bridges from poetry to political science, from science to art, from literature to visual art, how can the power of the imagination be assessed and re re renewed? So I'm sorry for my French accent. Resolutely turn, turn toward youth. This event is turned toward youth this night and will be dedicated to reflection around 
past utopias and to better think about the future. For example, the city of tomorrow with the city of Helsinki. The future in the second, the last, even tonight, about the future of indigenous people. Are all topics that to need to be debated. The emission driving society change will occupy a special place. So thank you again to be here for the opening of the third session of the night of IDE. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bougrab. I'm delighted now to uh, introduce you to uh, Mr. Passi Poissari, coordinator of the UN Development Policy and Agenda at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for the invitation to give a few opening words to this highly relevant night of ideas. I wish to thank the organizers, the French Institute and others for this timely initiative. And I also want to apologize on behalf of the Under Secretary of State, Mrs. Elena Kalko, who wasn't able to arrive here uh, today. Uh, she was asked to highlight Finnish actions towards sustainability in development cooperation. Uh, this is very important, of course, but this is only one but important element of the foreign ministry's activities towards sustainable development. Uh, foreign ministry's activities in crisis management, peace mediation, human rights or trade policy are also with the aim towards sustainable development. Today we are all confronted with a great task to transform our societies onto a sustainable path. The governments are responsible for implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, but it requires everyone on board. In Finland, we have a strong in involving societies, and we promote this stakeholder participation in both national and international arenas, including our development cooperation. Finland's development policy and development corporations are guided by the 2030 agenda. That's, by the way, what is missing here. I'm coordinator for the 2030 agenda, not only the agenda. Uh, of, that would be quite much if I would be coordinator of the whole agenda of the foreign ministry. But after all, on the other hand, we can always say that everything that we do should have the same aim, and that is sustainable development. Uh, so the main goal of our development policy is to reduce poverty and inequality. We put particular emphasis on the rights of women and girls and on the strengthening of the developing countries' own economies to promote employment, livelihoods and well-being. The priorities also include the democracy and the functioning of societies, as well as access to food, water and energy and the sustainable use of natural resources. What many developing countries need is a socially responsible private sector and sustainable investments to generate new jobs and livelihood opportunities. Also, we need to reduce and eliminate inequalities within these societies for development to reach all citizens so that no one is left behind. What are needed to achieve the 2030 Agenda are functioning and accountable governance structures and a civil society that can address irregularities and consolidate the democratic foundations. Encouraging local participation is, a, is an essential part of our development cooperation. There are several exa excellent examples of how this local activism has served the implementation of the 2030 Agenda in our partner countries. I give you two examples. Uh, in Tanzania, a 16-year-old Modesta Joseph wanted to help local women and girls in order to make their lives free from sexual harassment. She coded a website where other young women and girls can report the sexual harassment they have encountered. She was further supported by a Finnish innovation program, Tanzikt. 
and this Tanzig has supported over 60 startups in different fields of life. And we have similar innovation programs also many other partner countries. My another example is from Ethiopia, where Finland and Ethiopia have a bilateral water and sanitation project that is based on community managed project approach. This approach decentralizes service delivery by making communities responsible for the planning, implementation and maintenance of their water schemes. The key feature of this approach and of this funding mechanism is that the communities receive funding which they manage themselves. These were two very different examples of our support to local actors. Naturally, there are many more. Uh, many of our broader programs have a built-in local participation element. And we encourage all Finnish actors in developing countries to network with their local counterparts. So last, let me once again wish you all welcome to this event and let us have a concrete and forward-looking discussion to feed us all with fresh ideas towards a full and effective implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, highlight also that all the events in Helsinki are uh, live streamed on a single uh, platform in Paris. So I would like also to take that opportunity first to welcome people who may follow uh, all the discussions abroad and also thank our partner, the Metropolia University and their teams for helping us in uh, the live webcasting of the event. This is now the time to introduce you to the panel discussion. Uh, so join me in uh, welcoming uh, the panelists, um, Annie Sinemaki, Deputy Mayor of Helsinki, Annika Lindblom, Secretary General of the National Commission on Sustainable Development, Ronan Dantec, French Senator of Loire Atlantique, and Yua Lepanen, CEO of Demos Helsinki. I led the microphone uh, to the moderator, Larry Rayantie from Citra, and the stage to the panelists for this discussion. I wish all of you a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you and, and good, good afternoon, everybody. We will uh, so, soon see the very inspiring documentary, Kesko uh, Natand, which is about a uh, small town of Ungersheim, which uh, uh, aims to, to be sort of a, a sustainable, self-sustaining uh, community. And uh, uh, before that, we will have, uh, have hopefully as inspiring uh, a panel discussion as, as that with very, very e excellent uh, participants uh, to address the question how uh, local power can imagine sustainable solutions to, to global issues. And uh, uh, first, I would like to ask uh, uh, Mrs. Anni Sinnemäki, the deputy mayor of, of Helsinki, to, to address this question. Please. Thank you and uh, good afternoon to, to everyone. And uh, from Helsinki's behalf, uh, very welcome. I think this is really a good question. And as many of you know, uh, in Helsinki, uh, we have just... Uh, uh, last year we had an election uh, and at the moment uh, we are full of energy uh, since we have a uh, new strategy, new city organization and new leadership with uh, new mayor Mr. Jan Vapavuori and four of us uh, deputy mayors uh, to, together with the citizens of Helsinki uh, to lead the city forward. And uh, I would say that our uh, our strategy that was here in Helsinki last September in the city council, uh, the most functional city in the world, it certainly uh, gives uh, answers or uh, sets us the task to answer these questions uh, for the future. Uh, I think um, in a way one could see that uh, in Europe perhaps 
also in the uh, wider world, there are at least two quite aching crises or uh, complicated problems that we will have to solve. There's the future and functioning uh, of democracy, how the really will, uh, will it uh, stay vibrant and such that people can trust each other, the, trust their governments, uh, trust the leadership. Uh, and uh, the second crisis, it's even perhaps more evident or clear, uh, is the climate crisis. And I, in our analysis or in the discussions that we had when uh, preparing this strategy for Helsinki was certainly such a feeling that we have to address these two questions at the same time. That one cannot be left uh, behind or that we cannot just uh, act so that, okay, we take climate crisis and climate targets uh, really seriously but we do not think how to involve citizens or how uh, the citizens' initiatives uh, can be part of the climate crisis. But uh, we thought that, okay, we need to uh, have these both questions on the table at the same time. Uh, and at the moment, I think we are working quite uh, intensively uh, with these two tracks. In our new strategy in Helsinki, we raised the bar, we raised the ambition of the climate targets really significantly. So from 1990 level, our target is to reduce the climate emissions, uh, CO2 emissions by six uh, by the year 2030 and by 80% by the year uh, 2035. And uh, actually uh, just at the moment, uh, the working groups, uh, uh, workshops involving uh, different stakeholders are preparing the uh, concrete action to uh, meet these targets. And at the moment already we can say that everything is needed, all the fields are needing, needed and everyone's, be it companies, be it research institutions or uh, NGOs or active citizens, everyone's work will be needed. And then the second thing that we are working at the moment um, also in Helsinki is new ways of strengthening uh, people's power, strengthening the democracy and strengthening uh, the local uh, people's own ability to influence the city, to influence their surroundings. Um, there are many um, tracks that we are working on. One of the most interesting ones uh, that will take place this year, uh, 2018, is that we will for the first time in Helsinki introduce uh, our model of uh, participatory budgeting and there is 4 million euros reserved to that, uh, uh, that project. So we will collect uh, ideas to be funded uh, from the citizens and citizens groups. Uh, there will be analyses uh, by the civil service and then also votings that will decide that what are the concrete projects that will be funded. And that is something I think that it's, it will be interesting to follow and uh, I think we will learn a lot uh, from it. But it's not the only thing that is happening uh, within the en engagement, but there are many uh, initiatives in different fields of city government, from city planning to social and health services, where new ways and models of, uh, of uh, engagement uh, uh, of citizens uh, are going to take place. And um, I have the feeling that at the same time, with these uh, targets of uh, being climate smart, responsible regarding climate, and strengthening our local democracy within the city. We are at the same time participating uh, um, in the, uh, solving global issues, both perhaps I think in uh, more informal networks where cities learn from each other, inspire each other, and at the moment in the climate field, there is a lot that is happening uh, uh, many ideas uh, are flowing between the cities uh, in this regard. And perhaps then in more formal way, uh, I feel that we are participating uh, in the UN context. 
making and uh, making new urban agenda real, uh, which uh, I, I think Annika then uh, will speak more. Uh, that was uh, in a sort of nutshell, not the smallest nutshell, <laughs> what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, next, I would like to ask uh, Mrs. Annika Lindblom, uh, the Secretary General of the National Commission for Sustainable Development, uh, and you also are uh, coordinating the implementation of uh, Agenda 2030 and, and the Sustainable Development Goals here in Finland. So maybe you will address those uh, issues as well in your speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, just a technical question. Do we have a pointer? Because I have few slides. Here is. Can I have, have it so I don't need to move from here? <laughs> Thank you. Let's see how it... Does it come next? Yes. Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. As, as was introduced, my name is Annika Lindblom and I work as a Secretary General in the National Commission on Sustainable Development. Unfortunately, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of the Environment, Mrs. Hannele Pokka, couldn't come because of illness, but I try to replace her as, as well as possible, although my, my topic will be slightly different. Um, well, just two few words on, on the commission that I represent. We have in Finland this national commission, um, we have had it for 25 years now, without interruption. We have had it under 10 governments, under seven uh, prime ministers, and actually under <laughs> Mrs. Sinemäki when she worked as a minister of labor at, at that time. But basically it has been led by the Prime Minister. What is unique in our commission is that it includes basically all spheres of the society. We have the parliament in involved, all the ministries, we have uh, all the um, advocacy uh, groups from industry, from trade unions, from NGOs, non-governmental organizations, from environment, development, women, farmers, indigenous peoples, we have even churches with us. So it's kind of a miniature Finland that, that I'm operating with. And so this topic uh, that, that we have today in front of us is very important uh, for me. And now uh, when we think, and it was already mentioned that um, uh, even though Finland, we in Finland, we have had this very long-term tradition of, of doing sustainable development policies and measures, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which was adopted uh, in, in, at the highest level in New York in 2015, set actually like a new baseline for all the countries in the world. This universal agenda really forced us also in Finland to look at the mirror. Are our ways of doing things on a sustainable basis? Sustainable development is not ju just something that happens out there, but it is something that we also have to contribute here in Finland and in rich countries. And so we started to think, what would be our action? What would be our contribution to this implementation up until 2030, when it will, uh, it will, which will be the timeline? Um, and what we discovered, because we had... Uh, designed a lot of strategies, I mean, a lot of sustainable development strategies during these years. But we m sort of found out that these strategies had, even though they had been important for, for awareness raising and all these things, but they had not really ended up having concrete impact, not really attracted, for instance, private sector to join in, not really we couldn't see concrete action. It was more like a political jargon still. So we decided that we have to do something new. And then we, we, we decided to, to uh, design uh, this society's commitment to sustainable development, which was adopted already actually in 2014. So it was one year before the 2030 agenda was adopted, but it has been updated after that. And the basic idea in our society's commitment is to concretize, to operationalize sustainable development. What it means to you and me, what it means to this company, what does it mean to this school, what does it mean to this political party, what does it mean to Anni Sinemäki or, or anyone.
concretize uh, and bring this concept from, 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 from the, this level to, to really on the ground. So it has a policy framework, so there are objectives. We need to have a, a joint mission, we need to have joint objectives, but we need to know how to implement it, not only by, by the government and the politicians and the ministries, but also how any one of us can join in. And, and we are quite proud of this because not normally people think that civil servants can be innovative, but, but we did it. So this is uh, just to characterize what is our aim. We have at the moment 756 uh, uh, individual commitments from all, all uh, actors of, of the Finnish society. Uh, maybe one third of them come from companies, and then there are a lot of schools, a lot of municipalities, uh, a lot of, of course, uh, different organizations. And what we aim at is to really create this a positive circle of action to really create the systemic change towards sustainable development here in Finland and, and to really see uh, change happening. And this is just one example what we aim at, to have these clusters between different theme areas. For instance, food waste is something that many of the actors that have joined in our partnership, they have committed to. So you can see some of the Finnish companies and communities who, who have been participating and to really have this positive uh, chain of, of action all around the society. And then we have also um, uh, sort of witnessed that the, the, our, our tool, the society's commitment, can also also uh, create alternative tools to fulfill, for instance, environmental obligations. You may have noticed in your own uh, core market or S market or whatever market you are going to your, for your grocery shopping, that there are no more plastic bags available for free. And this is part of this commitment, about part of this Green Deal that the Ministry of the Environment and the and the, the, the Federation of Finnish Commerce did uh, to really replace legislation by voluntary uh, commitment. This was an EU directive uh, on packaging waste and, and the Ministry of the Environment decided that, well, this might be something that we can try without legislation. Let's see after three years if this works. If this works, then fine. If it doesn't, then we need to have legislation. And so far, all the retail uh, actors in Finland, all the major ones are, are on board. So at, at least for now, it, it looks very promising. And then just a few examples of these uh, commitments that we have in our... In our uh, so this is a, a, a partnership between the Prime Minister's office, between the, actually, the Prime Minister's office uh, uh, coordination desk and different actors who want to join in. I have, I have just three examples here, just to illustrate. This is not a, a kind of... a uh, uh, ranking or anything, but just from different actors, what they have done. For instance, Fatser, everybody knows Fatser, the, one of the largest corporations in food in industry here in, here in Finland. And they have really sort of uh, engaged in putting sustainable development at the core of their operations. And they have done three different individual commitments. First, using, any, uh, responsi uh, using only responsibly produced soya in their, pro in, in their uh, products. They are supporting children and youth in their possibilities to influence in development of school lunches here in Finland. And thirdly, they are further reducing the food loss and waste in their operations. And they have really concrete measures, concrete indicators that they have provided us, how they are do doing that. Another example from a bit different uh, sphere is um, um, my and Thur Nestling uh, Foundation. And I took this up because I find that this is really important uh, sort of um, uh, part, uh, um, important actors that we have managed to get in. Really, these foundations and investors. And, and, and they are committing in assessing and consist consistently improving the sustainability of their investments. And what they're concretely doing is really uh, their stock portfolio managers of this foundation, they are required to put together more sustainable investment strategies in, in all their actions. And this has, I, 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 we believe, really big potential for, for transforming the society into sustainable di direct.
lastly, for <laughs> just teasing my neighbor, um, the neighboring city of Helsinki, the city of Espo, they have re really been pioneering in our, our society's commitments. So far they have done 100 individual commitments, really mainstreamed uh, this Agenda 2030 throughout their organization, in libraries, in hospitals, in schools, in infrastructure, all their core operations, they have made uh, sort of also concrete action, but also what is more important to really mainstreaming this into their, their uh, uh, city strategies and planning. And I, listening to you, <laughs> um, I, I believe that you have a lot, to, you would have also a lot to contribute to in our society's commitment. So our motto is basically every action counts. We want to get everybody uh, working with us uh, for, for sustainable development here in Finland. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And uh, uh, next, would, it would be interesting to hear some perspective from from France. And we have in the, in the panel uh, Ronan Dantek, senator of, of Loire Atlantique region in France, and uh, also uh, very much active in sustainable cities. And uh, if I'm correct, also a former uh, deputy mayor of city of Nantes, which was European Green Capital in, in 2013. Please. Thank you. And thank you to invite me uh, here in Helsinki in Finland. Uh, first, I'm absolutely sorry with my French accent. Uh, normally, if you speak French, you can understand me in English. If you speak just English, it's not true. Uh, I try to, to speak my better English, but I'm sorry. Uh, 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 it, it's important to be here because uh, I'm sure that uh, today in the world, I have some uh, um, action at the world level as a UCLG a spokesperson for, for climate issue. Uh, Finland is one of the best examples in the world to do the link, a strong link between uh, climate issues and sustainable, uh, sustainable development issue. I think it, it's, a, it's a very, very important point. Um, in 2015, as you know, uh, uh, we have found the, the deal with the, uh, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. But the, the same year, uh, in September in New York, uh, uh, we, have, uh, we have the, uh, the deal with the 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goal. It's the same agenda. It's the same agenda. It's impossible uh, to, to reach uh, the, the sustainable, sustainable Development Goal uh, if of course, uh, we don't stabilize the climate because uh, the decrease in uh, of food production, dry season, maybe dry season in Finland. It's not sure. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's easy to understand that. But I think it's important to imagine that it's not impossible to, to involve, to mobilize uh, people to tackle climate change if people in their daily life have some big problems uh, just to survive. And, and we need to have answer and response to the different sustainable development goals if we want to, to create this dynamic to tackle climate change. It's important to, to have this idea, it's a, the same agenda. And it's the same agenda at the local level uh, too. Um, the, the, the Paris Agreement, the, the, the Paris Accord, uh, is not a very strengthening uh, accord. It's, it's more a question of trust. Uh, after the, the fail in, in Copenhagen, um, the, the international community uh, changed the, the model. Uh, Paris Agreement is not as a Kyoto Agreement, for example. Kyoto Agreements are very, very uh, precise target for each country. A lot of countries uh, don't reach the targets. Uh, Paris is different. Paris Agreement is the idea that each country do their own part of the job. It's not very, very precise. Every country imagine what is this part of responsibility and do that. And at the local level, I think it's the same thing. It's, it's a question of trust. I do my part if you do your part and vice versa. And um, I think that at the local level, uh, the mobilization to, to tackle climate change, all our brainstorming, our uh, particip participatory uh, events, it's the same idea to create a, a 
debate in the city uh, to, to enforce uh, local democracy, to create trust between all the, the non-state actors and local elected people. We must do that, we, we, we propose, and we are in this dynamic. And uh, I, I preside a, a, a world foundation with climate change, uh, and we take the, this run change because the mobilization to, to tackle climate change can offer some opportunities for other uh, issues, uh, uh, democracy, quality of life, and we are in this dynamic. And uh, the presentation of my colleague of Enziki, we do the same in a lot of cities uh, today. Maybe you are more uh, ambitious in not if we reach 50% uh, less CO2 emission in 2030, we will be uh, uh, happy. Um, I think this, this point is very important. And after in this debate, because uh, the thema today is uh, the imagination, we can uh, find uh, new ideas, some original ideas, just one example of original idea of not maybe it's the reason that uh, we win uh, green capital uh, in uh, in 2013 uh, we use in not um, uh, a, a small mammal uh, edge uh, I, I, I find edge hog you know edge hog it's a small mammal we speak yes and we uh, we, we have developed it in, in not a big study to follow the edge hog in the city. Uh, and after some months, we have a very precise idea that the, 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 the pathway, and we use this study to develop pedestri pedestrian walkway. It's the opportunity to develop more uh, use of, uh, uh, of walk in the city with uh, the help of edge hog. It's an, an example of uh, of our capacity of imagination. And in the debate with all the actors in the city, we have a lot of proposal, car sharing. Uh, we, we have just finished a, a new debate uh, uh, last uh, December in Nantes, and you have a lot of new proposal, car sharing, uh, how to involve uh, uh, a lot of people. I think this is uh, a very important point. But, but if I have a little bit prov provocative, um, Maybe we have uh, a, a difficulty today at the European level. You, you understand that a lot of cities are dynamic. Helsinki, Nantes, uh, Copenhagen, uh, Stockholm, uh, some German cities, etc., uh, etc. Et But a lot of these cities, if, if you take the list of green capital uh, uh, in, in Europe, all these cities are rich cities. And maybe their mobilization to tackle climate change with some uh, uh, other uh, result as a better quality of life, uh, uh, yields, uh, uh, quality of air. An opportunity for this city to be the winner of the liberal competition between the cities in Europe. Uh, it's important and maybe Uh, the difference between rich and poor cities in Europe are, uh, at the end, more important after this mobilization to tackle climate change. I am a little bit provocative. And I, I say that because if you integrate sustainable development goals and a more sustainable development vision, you understand that you need uh, to have uh, other strategy at the national and European uh, level uh, to help other cities Uh, to have uh, uh, a more uh, large distribution of, of, the, of the incomes. I think it's an important point, and we don't discuss a lot of that, uh, about this point, but as we discuss here, not just climate, but climate and sustainable development, I think this point uh, is an important point for our uh, debate at the European uh, level. And uh, last point in my 10 uh, minutes, um, and we discuss about uh, imagination. Um, I, at the world level, uh, I take my hat as a UCLG spokesperson for climate. We see at this moment that uh, if we want uh, to, uh, to reach the sustainable development goal with the mobilization to tackle climate change, we need new tools 
uh, for access to finance. It's a key point of our agenda. Uh, if I am pragmatic or cynism, uh, it's sure that um, uh, the people of developed countries uh, agree to pay to stabilize climate more to pay for sustainable development. How we use this uh, finance mobilization for the sustainable development goal? I think it's an important point uh, in our reflection uh, today. We have some uh, clear and simple examples, for example, access to energy in Africa. Uh, if we want to, uh, uh, to stop or decrease uh, deforestation, for example, we need to, to develop uh, renewable energy, photovoltaic, for example. And we, we can use the money of, of climate uh, for more access to energy. It's a sustainable development goal. And to decrease deforestation, it's a climate goal. We, we need to, um, to, to, to have this strategy uh, today. And it is a little bit difficult because uh, it shows that uh, uh, the, the uh, finance community uh, has a lot of imagination uh, to imagine uh, new tools to win money, less imagination to distribute money. And uh, we must discuss uh, more and do proposal about this point. I think it's a, it's, it's a key point. There is some point, local, world, European point, but we need this, uh, this coherence, this consistency between all this, this scale, uh, if you want to reach at the end all our targets, sustainable development and climate targets. Thank you. Thank you. And next, uh, Juha Leppänen is the CEO of, of uh, Think Tank Demos Helsinki. And uh, well, I have been, I have had a privilege of, of doing a lot of collaboration with them. And, and you, 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 well, you have quite a good experiences from sustainability and participatory projects and things like that. So maybe some, some perspectives from, from that. Thank you so much, Larry. Uh, pleasure to be here from my behalf as well. And thank you for everyone uh, on the panel. Uh, Demos Helsinki, we are around 40 people uh, doing research and consultancy projects, an impact-driven nonprofit organization trying to ensure that we do make the transition towards more democratic and sustainable societies. So the agenda is very much the same. Uh, I liked very much what Anne Sinemäki said in the beginning about Helsinki's approach of combining and putting together the democratic participatory and sustainable and climate uh, agendas and thinking those as a whole. And I think that essentially brings us towards solutions in, in imagining the, the gap between rich and poor cities, for instance. But at the same time, it means a fairly new model of doing things, because if you put democracy climate and sustainability together, you're talking about how we participate, you're talking about how we produce and how, you, how we can consume things. So that's a very much essence of how we live and how we engage in our societies. So the problem definition becomes a lot more difficult and we re really need to imagine what the model uh, forward would be. Uh, from the question for the panel, I took three points as perspectives to go forward. Uh, the first one is I very much like that there is the word imagine in the title and it was already emphasized in the preliminary words of this session here. Uh, we're lacking behind in understanding what in concrete terms in our lives the sustainable futures would look like. In 1939 there was a World's Fair in New York and in there there was an exhibition called Futurama Exhibition, The City of Tomorrow. It's quite an interesting piece of an exhibition because in that exhibition what was done was that the car industry in the United States depicted the societies and cities that would be built that would be based on a car. Car, of course, is not the most sustainable mobility solution, but the vision was very powerful because they were able to ask people, wouldn't it be nice for you to have two bedrooms instead of one? Wouldn't it be nice to have a large kitchen and a garden? Wouldn't it be nice to have a distinction between different zones in cities? The habitat zone, commercial zone, industrial zone, and the nature. All of those accessible by car. So the vision was quite powerful. And like we know 
from 50s onwards, the cities in the United States were built based on a very similar vision. Of course, many other actors were involved in that as well, from the academia, from polit politics and so forth. But what, what we're lacking, at least from my perspective now, is that the, S the Sustainable Development Goals offer us an opportunity to imagine uh, they offer us some type of a concrete way to touch what the futures could look like and how those futures would be for us as people. What would those mean in terms of lifestyles? But we don't have a very comprehensive idea yet. And I think the responsibility in imagining and in thinking what the concrete life in sustainable cities uh, that have tackled climate change uh, is within the cities, and that's something that could be done together with the citizens in those cities. In 2012, we published a report called Spread uh, Scenarios for Sustainable Lifestyles in 2050. In that, we had uh, from five different countries around Europe, uh, around 200 people participating in creating some scenarios, some ideas, but that's not enough. Two of the scenarios were very much about local solutions. So what are the local solutions to tackle climate change and tackle the material consumption in our societies? But I think we need, need a lot more understanding and imagination. The second point uh, to the title is for us to also concentrate on the mainstream and the really important issues within cities. Oftentimes, local solutions towards sustainability and tackling climate change are perceived as something quite remote. Uh, Eco-villages or communities completely detached from where most of the people live in our societies. Or then, a newly built areas, uh, such as in Helsinki, for instance, Kalasatama. Both of those are important, but we know that most of our cities are already built. So most of the urban stock is already here. We won't rebuild it by 2050. We have to live with it. And at the same time, we know that there are lots of different digital services and solutions, ideas, new models and ways of living and consuming that we could integrate in the already built urban stock. Three years ago, we did an exercise from Oslo and Lahti here in Finland on doing uh, experiments on what would be the solutions that would increase sustainability in the already built uh, urban stock. In Bagarmossa, which is a suburban Stockholm, and in the center of Lahti, we had different stakeholders and people imagining and creating experiments in how lives in those places would be more sustainable within the already built uh, urban stock. I think those solutions are needed much more now than they have been before. And we already in Helsinki, for instance, have the Ilmastokatu initiative, but much more uh, is needed. The third point is uh, to the point that Ronan was also implying to you, that we need new tools and new approaches and frameworks uh, for the public sector as well. Because if we're talking about a new approach, combining the sustainable and democratic goals, uh, that's probably not done only with the existing tools or existing uh, approaches within the public sector. Uh, three years ago, we did an exercise here with the Prime Minister's office to create a model for experimenting with policies. Uh, so the idea was that whenever there's a government, the government can experiment on a specific policy or regulation before it becomes mainstream. There is now 27 policy experiment in the Finnish government. And in that approach, the idea was that in the preliminary stages of when we start to think of new policies, whether it's a city level, local level, or governmental national, uh, there would be a phase in which allow people, the local citizens, uh, to participate in defining what are the important goals or whether there is already solutions to specific issues. I think these type of approaches are much more needed in variety of different issues, whether it's local or national level. But, that, but it's a very, very difficult task because it means that we need to give power from, uh, uh, from the public sector and the official policy design back to the citizens through new approaches. And the participatory budgeting measures uh, already uh, put out here are one way to do that, but I think we need much more uh, frames, frameworks and tools uh, to do that on a variety of different issues. So these three, imagination, uh, focusing on mainstream and important uh, themes, and finally, new frameworks and tools to tackle the very complex issues talked today here.
Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, now, now we'll go on to the disc discussion, and and maybe we have chance also to have some questions from the audience, if you, if you like. But I I would first like to start asking about the role of. Well, we are, we are talking here about how the local power can can imagine sustainable solutions, and we, and we do have in the documentary good example of a local community which actually has has taken action here. But how, how do you see in in general? Is there this kind of uh, power and uh, and uh, enthusiasm in the people that they the power which actually could be used for solving these problems and and what for example cities or, or legislation could do about that thank you um, I tried to at the same time answer the question and actually comment a few of the things that were said um, I think there is and um, just to go to the uh, question uh, that uh, Senator Dantek uh, raised that uh, what is the action or is there a difference between quite wealthy, well-off Nordic cities, for example, like Helsinki, Copenhagen and Stockholm, and then those cities or smaller municipalities uh, that Mm, it's not so self-evident that uh, there's, there are finances or there's population growth or new young people bringing in new ideas. And I would say that um, in, in the Finnish context, for example, uh, the network of municipalities uh, that is called Hinku municipalities, uh, which is a network that uh, has worked together with the uh, Finnish Institute for um, Environment, and there, I think what um, what has happened, there have, have been really different municipalities from sort of uh, uh, first Uusikaupunki, for example, which is uh, not a big city. And when they started to they pro participate in the program of really ambitious climate targets in the Finnish context, they were not so well off. They have been a sort of quite, uh, there's, there has been a... Uh, um, outer industry, it's the only place in Finland where actually you can build cars. And at that time when they started their um, climate action, they were really not aware uh, what will happen. Now ac actually they have <laughs> succeeded with that factory. Uh, but I think that part of their energy came from the fact that they actually wanted to do something new and more ambitious. And different uh, municipalities that has participated, for example, in this Hinku network, I, I think it's an inspiring example that actually uh, beat Padas Yoki, that I don't even remember how many people there are, but certainly less than in majority of the uh, Helsinki neighborhoods. Uh, and they have done their thing. So in a way, I think that actually climate action and doing things differently can be something that energizes uh, communities there where you do not have so many resources or, for example, where the uh, population is, um, is declining. So I think that uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is something that actually we can learn from each other or different networks uh, from different parts, uh, parts of the world. And perhaps the second, uh, second point is that there's certainly um, a messy part of uh, giving power to uh, local structures. And I think in Helsinki we, we have felt it because we have, as a an, as an sort of a big administration, we have opened up past the decade a lot. And of course, it makes some things different and more difficult. And it, at the same time, then more long term, it can be, uh, I believe that it's uh, more fun and more democratic and uh, we can do things better. But it also involves a phase where you have to give away part of your authority or uh, your dignity as a specialist in some field. So there is this sort of uh, not so easy part that is part of the uh, sort of uh, giving uh, others uh, a chance to imagine and uh, influence things. That's it. 
interesting. So it's, it's not easy for the people who now control the power to actually give it away to, to, to the wider audience or the people themselves. But it might make actually the communities a lot fun, more fun and, and also nicer place to live. Uh, Annika Lindblom, what, what, what do you think? Thank you. Yeah, I very much agree with with um, with Anni, uh, and she also already mentioned these different networks. One of the networks is is this carbon neutral municipalities Hinku, but we are have other networks as well, also including quite small, medium sized municipalities. And we think in the state administration really that that municipalities and cities are the the laboratories of change because. That is really the place where action happens, and where many times it's it's easier. I, I don't say easier because <laughs> I haven't worked for a municipality, but I would say that you can see the concrete results more easily, and that motivates uh, the actors to really work together to 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 set targets and to really work for them. And um, but I think one important thing when I have been work cooperating and working with the, with, the, with with these municipalities and cities is is the leadership. You have all these municipalities who have sort of agreed upon ambitious targets for their climate policies or sustainable development policies. They have had a very innovative, uh, inspired, uh, active uh, mayors or or um, let's say top level, uh, both politicians and, and civil servants. And I think that is crucial. It is not enough that some environment uh, department um, head of unit is excited. It's fine, it's great, but it's not enough to really make this big wheel r running. Uh, and, and, and I think that w when we think of Helsinki, you, <laughs> your, your starting point is very good, uh, given that, that both uh, Mayor Vapavori and, and yourself, you, you are very dedicated on these issues. So the role of leadership in municipalities and cities is very crucial if something big is going to, uh, is ought to be happen. Thanks. Mr. Dantek, do you have similar experience? No, just um, uh, the, our question now, because you understand we are leader and we, we want to save the planet. But uh, our question, uh, the next step, it's um, to have all the municipalities, not just municipality with a, a mayor leader or a deputy mayor leader. And for that, we need inhabitants who consider that... Uh, the, 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 the commitments, uh, the mobilization, climate change, sustainable goal, it's an important point in their democratic choice. Uh, I think our question today, it is that, uh, that for, for the election, that climate uh, change uh, uh, goals or sustainable goal are a democratic priority. And uh, uh, if we want to, to win this, this, this battle, uh, against uh, climate change, we need to pass this step. Not just some leader, we know that there are some leaders, but to have this uh, generalization uh, of the, the narrative uh, by the politicians. Okay. Uh, two years ago, they were building a wall uh, in Manhattan. They had had a few hurricanes and they wanted to build a protection wall uh, in Manhattan to, to protect from the floods. So it made a lot of sense and one of the expert organizations hired to do that was Pjarke Ingels Group, which is a Danish architect, the best known and best reputational com uh, companies in architecture in the world. But the issue there was that they designed a very nice wall, but local communities didn't want that. They didn't like that. And it was quite an interesting thing because architecture, of course, is one of those professions in which you've thought that you always know the best. You always know which is the best design. And then when you do the best design but people don't want it, it creates a lot of confusion. So for a profession, uh, not just the civil servants, but for, for professional experts from a variety of industries, the clash between local communities and what has been done as a top-down way and a solution can be very, very significant. 
So this is perhaps more of a hint towards future career choices in terms of not just focusing on the black boxes that create magical solutions, but instead trying to find ways and methodologies to actually be able to listen, listen and work together. And it is a very messy thing, but the end result is something that we cannot avoid. So in the end, we just have to go that trajectory. Uh, to what Senator Dantek said, I, I agree, and I think that at this point, uh, we're in a phase in which we have specific leaders and specific models by those leaders. So we have Barcelona doing its thing uh, very much in relation to how they work with digital solutions and how they open those solutions. There's Helsinki, of course, for years already. There's Paris, uh, there's Lyon, there are many, many places. There are more and more places in the U.S. as well, because there as well, one of the reactions to Trump has been a coalition of cities coming together and trying to experiment and find solutions on a local level. But the next phase probably is that we should start to find ways to codify and, and be able to mainstream some of the models and say that there are some elements in each of those that make more sense than others. And I think this is the difficult work that is much needed for us to be able to have a more mainstream coalition of cities. Yes, Mrs. Sinemaki. Um, just to continue that, what you uh, you were thinking that um, I think uh, when I, I think you has been uh, at some point uh, analyzing and even uh, writing a report on on motivation to action, that what actually motiv motivates to action, how you can create an environment that uh, motivates to action. And if I recall right, one of the uh, key findings is that people do act when they do believe that others similar to them act as well. That no one wants to act alone because in an issue like climate change or many other issues, you don't want to be like the single uh, person that tries something and no one <laughs> like next to you is doing uh, nothing. So um, I think that this is quite important. I think after the um, last year's uh, municipal election in Finland, we have seen that uh, Espo, Helsinki, Vanta, Tampere, Turku, at least, which are like more or less the five uh, biggest cities in Finland, have committed in their strategies really uh, to climate goals that are significantly uh, more ambitious than before. So in a way, I do, do believe that this action and commitment that, that they do spread in the end even quite easily. And it, that, I, I don't mean that it it's easy and most of these cities, not even Helsinki, who's probably quite fine, it's sort of el elaborating the uh, action points. Uh, of them do not know yet that how much it will change the transport system or what is requi required from the energy efficiency, what is required that we would eat in a more sustainable way. But still, I think it seems that when when um, enough cities or enough municipalities do act it spreads quite fast. So there I have some kind of confidence and uh, that it will happen. And uh, what is needed then is probably like formalizing it and I think also like state taking the ball at some point and counting that how much this would mean to national goals uh, in order to, to them to set the bar in the national level. That is still the level that, that the EU policy work to set that, that higher. Thank you. May, and maybe just with one sentence, in this moment, uh, we need result because we have taken a lot of commitments and we are in the moment that it's necessary to show that after the commitment, we have the result. And with some complex question of quantification, uh, it's not so easy, but uh, if we want to continue to have this dynamic, uh, this trust, the, 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 the key word is, is trust, we need now that we are result uh, because if we are result after uh, the other uh, city or the other country see that and, and do the, uh, the, the same thing, uh, adapted with the, the local situation. And to pick up on, on what Anne said, uh, I agree with, on a city level, we have enough of networks, we have enough of communications to engage that type of climate actions. 
interesting thing is that we're seeing the same thing happening on a company and cooperation level, even globally. So more and more companies are also taking sustainable development goals uh, in part of their strategy, which is hugely interesting. I think this shift has happened in the space of last 18 months. And, and that's something that we've, uh, it's very important to take note. But what we're lacking, perhaps, is how we ensure that people and communi communities are able to share those ideas together, because there are not too many actors that are incentivized to do that. There are not too many networks that allow us to essentially show that these things already happen. And I think this is something, uh, if we want to tackle climate issues, uh, we need to tackle them on every level. And this level is something that can be neglected uh, quite easily. Of course, there are initiatives, but, uh, but we need a little bit more. And I agree very much about results, because uh, in the end, we might remember these decades as time when we talked a lot, but nothing came out. Okay, th thank you. Maybe we could now have a question from the audience. One question, yes, over there. Thank you for the great discussion. Um, do you honestly think it's possible to make all the sustainable goals as well as financially good as non-sustainable? Because so far, all people who follow sustainable goals, they have a little bit to sacrifice. Do you think it's possible not to sacrifice, but to make even more commercially successful sustainable things and how? Very short answers, if possible. I do think uh, I do think it's possible, uh, and um, I think that somehow perhaps we are a bit misled uh, in thinking that um, building a sustainable lifestyle would be a sacrifice. Because uh, if I think I have two children, and if I think uh, and children. Um, they awake the need of protection. And if I think what I'm afraid of in regard to them is that we will uh, go to the scenarios of three uh, Celsius heating or even more heating, and then I would be uh, afraid of uh, such uh, epidemic uh, illnesses spreading around the globe that there's no way of protecting uh, the uh, youngsters that you are bringing up. So in a way, I think that that is the um, frightful scenario and building the sustainable one, it's not a sacrifice, but it should be of interest and of joy and imagination that uh, that's what we need to build. And it means investment. So in a way, I think it means something that also there's there's more work uh, and uh, even business opportunities to build that. Uh, the only thing is that it's sacrifice for those actors who are completely reliant on fossil fuel. Uh, it's sacrifice for some individual companies. It can be a sacrifice for old ways of doing things, but um, actually for majority of communities or peoples, I think it's a good task and it's an interesting task to, to build a sustainable way. It's a, a very complex and dangerous question. Uh, the, the first idea is we, if we uh, do nothing, uh, we sacrifice the future. This is very simple. Uh, but um, I think it's more a question of contract. It's a social contract with a part of effort and a part of, uh, of result. And we must, our difficulty uh, is to, to explain uh, this contract because the, the, the scale of time uh, are not so easy to understand. A part of it for now, some result after. For some people who have difficulties now, it's difficult to integrate the idea to do effort. They disagree. And um, this, this question of the scale of time uh, is difficulty in this uh, new social contract. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that. The, the term trust is, is very important here. And, and, and really what I've also learned is that, in fact, we can make the society to move if the politicians take this seriously, because they have to show example, really the governments of the world. And, and, but we have also seen that also without the support of the government, the local actors can move. And that is, that is very good news, I think. 
uh, and the movement is there. So I think that the, the, the 2030 agenda and the 17 SDGs, they came just in time to really legitimize this movement that is already going on in different levels of, of, of the society in all around the world. And, and I think that all the, all the actors of the society, so the governments need to build trust between, uh, between different actors to, to really work together and, and uh, to find uh, common solutions. And we also say that sustainable development or sustainable future should be a new normal. Like, as you said, that something that is not sustainable is actually not normal anymore. And that would be sort of the ideal uh, world in 2030 at the latest when the, uh, when the agenda is expires. Just a very quick comment. I know this is a topic that we could use a lot of time to discuss and debate, but uh, there is a counter reaction from the finance sector, of course, trying to find ways through impact investing, different ways to measure finance to essentially ensure that the relevance stays high. Uh, personally, I think we do need a, a rethinking of the economic model we're having, and it is very much about social contract, and it's about defining uh, also partly who wins and who doesn't, and we know uh, who won't be on the winner's side, which are the very fossil heavy industries uh, currently. I think the only thing, and this is of course a huge and enormous task, so it's not something that it's, it needs to be begun, but it's not a very easy or quick thing to implement. But what I'm very worried about is that we'll, as we know, the urgency is the issue here. It's not about us not knowing what to do, it's about whether we're able to implement quick enough. And this is, of course, which will be the difficult thing in terms of who loses in terms of money and finance, uh, whether we are able to secure and make the transition in a way uh, that is essential, essentially comfortable for us and our societies. I think that's the most uh, important thing right now. Okay, uh, I think it's it's now time to move move to to the screening of the documentary. But uh, before that, I would like to to thank our wonderful uh, participants of the panel discussion.